Robert McQueen and Jorge Garcia are going to talk about FlatHub, an app store and build service for flatback applications. Hi everyone, um, my name is Robert McQueen and I work for Endless. I have just moved to become the VP of Platform. Uh, previously I've worked at Calabra, um, I've been around in GNOME for over 10 years. Um, since last week I've just joined the GNOME board um, to hopefully serve the community. Um, and uh, in context of this talk, uh, I'm the main sysadmin behind uh, FlatHub and a sort of on and off Flatpak contributor as well. Hello. I'm Jorge. Um, I don't have a job related to this stuff. I work on my spare time. But I've been doing, for the last couple of years, some Flaphack and Flaphack stuff. And one of them, the website, the new website. So, FlatHub. The goal of FlatHub um, is to place, uh, make a central place where you can get hold of Linux applications. Um, sandboxed, so ideally secure. We're working on that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, a journey. Um, running on Linux, uh, running on any CPU architecture that you, know, you commonly run desktop Linux apps on, um, and to, to provide somewhere that you can go and find a really, really good range of applications. Um, the, the thing that we're trying to achieve is to do that in a, a kind of vendor independent, distribution independent way. Um, one of the kind of learnings from you know, 15 or so years in desktop Linux is that the, the kind of fragmentation between distributions has been one of the barriers to, to actually having a, a healthy application ecosystem. Um, I think the kind of case in point is that in FlatHub, there is over 100 applications that are in FlatHub that I've never heard of. And these are very, very well polished, very well executed um, free software applications that do stuff that I would want to do on my computer. Um, and they've not made it through the gauntlet of submitting here and being built there and then meeting these standards and someone else taking it, blah, blah, blah. So the idea is that, that we have an independent place where application developers can go and put the application there and people can get it. So we're, we're trying to disintermediate. Um, the other thing is that uh, Flatpak itself is a very decentralized technology. Um, but that doesn't really give you a good place to start. So you have a tool that can run an app. You don't have an app. You're not going to be popular as an ecosystem, popular as a technology, unless you have a way to bring in app developers and a way to bring in users together. So FlatHub is also to bootstrap this. Our goal is not to be the only place that you get flat packs. Um, the, the goal is to make Flatpak itself a successful format and something that you can benefit from as a user um, and a developer. Um, so different activities inside the project. Um, obviously. We have a lot of people who bring their applications. We have people who bring other people's applications and testing them, building them. Um, there's a, you know, there's a, a team that's working on the website. Um, that's how Jorge joined the project, is through um, a wonderful new web app that actually shows the applications that we have. Um, we've actually been kind of working together, you know, FlatHub and Flatpak working together as a community to improve the developer story, the documentation around how do I make one of these things, how do I get it in, um, you know, what are good standards for actually putting an application together, um, and then getting the message out there. So different types of activities to, to actually, um, you know, have a, a kind of Twitter plan and make sure that people can hear about FlatHub and, and what we're doing there. Um, to keep the project successful, the most important thing that we need we need your apps. Um, we, uh, the whole goal of this is the not that we're producing a distribution. We're not trying to be a place of people to do packaging. Um, in a sense, it's a necessary evil. Some people are better at building stuff, and some people are better at writing software, so it's a partnership. Um, but the goal is not to produce a new community of people who, who build software. The goal is to produce a place where if you have an application and you want to get it out there, then there's a community that you can join and publish your work. Um, in amongst that, we have various develop, uh, development tasks. So in a sense, I'm trying to automate some of the infrastructure. So there's kind of DevOps stuff and Ansible and all of these things that I didn't know how to use until last year. Um, and so we have the website, different technologies there, and Flatpak itself. Um, so different programming skills. Um, and yeah, then there's a whole, a whole bunch of activities to support the documentation and the marketing and the website. Um, so, if you have any of these skills and you would like to join a wonderful free software project, then obviously FlatHub would love to have you on board. 
Um, so what do we actually have? Um, since the uh, beginning of this year, we have a very nice uh, website which actually kind of starts to look like this kind of app store concept. You can see what's here, you can see what, um, what's available, what's new, what's been updated, um, what we think is cool, um, and you can get it screenshots and, uh, and open the uh, applications to click a link and it would start in your um, uh, app center in your distribution. Um, so Flatpak is integrated into GNOME software and KDE Discover. Um, and basically can present all of the Flatback apps and can install them with a click from the browser. Um, who's behind uh, FlatHub? Um, the, uh, I have to apologize for this pie chart because actually we, we worked on this internally in Endless to basically figure out whether we were kind of distorting the, uh, the picture. Um, and the good news is we're not. Um, actually, just shy of half of the apps on FlatHub are, are contributed by the original author or somebody who works on the upstream team. Um, the other half of that is a mixture of uh, community and, and some kind of working in partnership. Um, but we have uh, over 200 individual contributors working on different apps inside the, the, the FlatHub organization. Um, we had a fundraiser to actually get our infrastructure started last year, so we have 21 individuals to thank for actually having a system at all. Um, and yeah, five people doing an incredible amount of work on reviewing the initial submissions and making sure that we have some you know, kind of common standards of, of the applications, um, and then another five people who've been working on the website and some of the, uh, the marketing. Um, thank you to the companies that are also supporting FlatHub. Um, we use a lot of CPU, we use a lot of bandwidth, um, so the server companies, um, Fastly, CDN, Mythic Beasts, uh, web hosting, um, and CodeThink, uh, Scaleway, and Packet are providing um, build workers to actually get the software built. Um, and we are also bringing on pre-render for search engine magic stuff, something to do with Node, I don't understand. Um, but yes, also, there are many companies, probably that's an incomplete list, so I apologize, but if you would like your name here, then um, please let me know. Um, developer time and, and, and other contributions. So um, we are you know, basically a year old. Um, we, we sort of launched, um, uh, launched around this time last year at Guadec. Um, the idea kind of came from the GTK Hackfest in London um, at the beginning of last year, um, where we, we kind of played with the idea, and um, Alex did a kind of little prototype build bot, and we, we kind of put some stuff online and, and um, yeah, stuff built. Um, we, we got 40 applications in there. Um, you know, Endless had a little backlog, and so we, we sort of got the ball rolling. Um, and we, we launched at Guadec. Um, and we started adding then these third-party kind of download applications of Slack and Spotify and uh, Skype and Steam, which is really cool. Um, and we, we generated the, the application list statically, which is kind of terrible, but uh, you know, there were apps on the web page. It was good. Um, towards the end of last year, we, uh, in Endless OS, we turned uh, FlatHub on by default. So um, FlatHub had 100 apps at that point, um, and we helped to get uh, LibreOffice into... Um, into FlatHub, um, which they're very happy with because they can then kind of publish and people can get the new release straight away. So that's um, a, a really cool app uh, to, to have. Uh, for Endless, we moved from LibreOffice 5 to 6, so everyone was overjoyed. Um, Linux Mint, uh, towards the end of last year, enabled um, the FlatHub uh, repo by default as well. Um, beginning of this year, um, Jorge's uh, new website went online. Um, so we had this kind of app store feel and we actually had pages with details and um, search and all these things, and uh, 200 apps at that point. Um, and then, most recently, we've put this website online. Uh, we're now up to 300 apps, and the graph is just going, basically. So it's really, really cool to see. <laughs> well, I will talk a little bit um, what FlatHub meant for users and developers. Um, let's see. Well, we've talked about this for users, what it offers. It's a place to find applications that you can install very easily, and it doesn't matter if you're using Debian Stable or Fedora or many of the mm, distributions that are more or less modern support them, from directly from GNOME Software, KDE Discover, or the command line. But I was very happy to install LibreOffice 6 on my Debian Stable because it was like, Cool. I mean, this is working, no? And the same for many other apps, and more to come. And we talk about this this morning, the benefits of Flatpak applications. Um, 
you get experience from the app developer. I remember when GIMP, the last version, was launched, the same day or the day after, we had it already. And it was like, wow, again, no? It's, um, I don't have to wait for next year a stable release of, GIMP, of Debian to, to enjoy it. It's like a click and, and it works. And it really does. And, and it's good that if you look at the repo for this app, it's just one of the gym developers that put it there. It's not somebody else. And we've collaborated with him to make the information to look nice in the application um, details page and, and, and so on. And for FlatHub, you know, Flatpak applications, sandbox it, easy to install and to update to, very important. And what they said about the app developers. Let's see. Um, and what we offer for developers. Um, as I said, a single point to publish your application and to reach a um, um, big number of users and, and distros. Um, and the apps will run as you build them. It's, it doesn't depend on the user's computer that might have a different version of one lib that makes it broken, break. Um, if it works on your computer, it works in uh, Flatpak Hub. Um, we have uh, growing numbers of users. Um, it's not stratospheric, but it's growing every day, and we're working on improving it. And also, I find uh, reading on, on IRC that some people has problems to build their applications for ARM and other arch architectures. Uh, with the build service that uh, we have, uh, it does work. And, and also, we have beefy machines, and you can compile LibreOffice in, I don't know, a couple of hours or something like that. Uh, yeah. So how can I publish an application in FlatHub? First of all, check if it is still if it's there already. I mean, because every day there are more and more. And if you follow the process, some applications are pending to be published. Maybe there's something to fix. So before beginning from scratch, you can look um, because some of them are work in progress, maybe block for something, and you can just help to do it a little bit to make it happen. Uh, for instance, uh, on Monday there is a workshop that Alex will do about uh, building uh, Flatpak applications. We encourage you to go. Um, here is just some key points. If you want to publish an application, go to flathub.org, and there is a section that says publish, and you will find more detailed information. But in a nutshell, uh, we, you, depends on the license of the application, um, you will be able to build it there or inst um, make an app downloader like the Spotify thing. Um, the requirements is also about the app ID, and you need to provide the um, app data and other stuff so everything looks fine in the website and GNOME software and discover. Um, if you are not the main actor of the, of the application, you can contact them nicely and say, hey, are you interested? I can help. And because what we want, especially is that the main developers of the applications, they publish their apps at FlatHub. And, and in the end, um, um, making a, flat, a new Flatpak application is building the manifest and telling which runtimes you need. And if you use some libraries that are very common, there are some shared models that you can put in your Git repo, and it will help uh, with the process. Um, well, I will. I won't get very much into details, but. In GitHub slash FlatHub, there is another project called FlatHub. And you need to fork that. Uh, then you clone it and create a branch with the name of your application. Uh, then in that new branch, uh, you will add the manifest to build it. And then you will make a pull request uh, to the original repo. So the reviewers team will look and check if everything is all right. They will make some comments. And if it's fine, they will trigger a, a build to make if it works properly. And if it does, they will create a repo, for example, github.com slash flathub slash the name of your application. And from that day, um, the application will be published. 
And on every commit you do in this repo in the build manifest, it will trigger an automatic build and it will be automatically updated in the repo. So uh, at the beginning, the, was, there is a review of people looking at you're doing and who you are. And once it's working, you are quite independent of being updating the applications. If it's anything not exactly, you, you tell me. And now Robert will introduce you how it's working all this stuff. Yeah, so just one other tip if you're actually writing a, a, a manifest to submit to FlatHub. Um, the most powerful tool to help you is the search in GitHub. They're like, how do I get libfoo into a flat pack? Like, search for libfoo, someone else will have done it. And yeah, it's very easy. <laughs> Once we have like a few versions of the same recipe, then it usually goes into the shared modules so that people can actually just include that kind of fragment. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we we should probably move to something shinier like um, GitLab. But uh, how, how FlatHub works at the moment um, is through BuildBot. So we get pushes from uh, from GitHub, um, and we have a, a BuildBot master running in the VM, which um, fetches all the sources called out in the manifest um, and sort of keeps a cache of all of those. Um, and then we, we basically go out to the workers and run Flatback Builder on, on each of the four different architectures that, that FlatHub targets. Um, we have a, a central server that, that maintains the OS tree repo. Um, it currently weighs in at 280 gigabytes. Um, and we have a, a YubiKey um, hardware security thing that's actually signing those with the, the repo GPG key. Um, we have some front ends, so we, we're basically uh, in two different data centers in London, uh, proxying and caching the, the repo um, so that we're not hitting the live servers. Um, the working set looks to be about 125 gigabytes. Um, and then those are the back ends for the Fastly CDN. So we, we turned that on earlier this year. Um, we serve 3.7 terabytes a day, which was quite eye-watering. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful for their sponsorship because uh, otherwise I'd be having to pay this like $10,000 a month bill. But <laughs> I never gave them my credit card number. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the that's kind of what the boxes are and where they are. Um, you know, GitHub pushes. Uh, Mythic Beast kind of hosts the, the physical servers that, that actually hold the, uh, the repo and the build master. Um, and the YubiKey is actually plugged into a physical box. It's, it's very, very old fashioned, not, not cloud at all. Um, the uh, packet code thing, Scaleway Builders, um, and the smiley face is Christian Hergert because he also runs a builder in, in Portland. Um, and then basically um, publishing out to, to Fastly CDN, or rather, it pulls from our front end servers. Um, so where do we go from here? Um, it, well, more applications is the main thing. Um, the more successful we are in terms of, of kind of attracting users and developers, then the more kind of weight and momentum we've given to the Flatpak uh, format and the, the technology. Um, and the more kind of guinea pigs we have to actually kind of ratchet up the security of the sandboxing to actually say, well, you know, these are, this is what uh, GTK needs to, you know, use the file chooser in all cases, or, you know, this is what Pulse Audio needs to ask you permission for the audio device. Um, so we can actually, actually have te test bed in order to actually show that we're delivering on the security benefits. Um, it's really hard to actually develop those things unless you have applications who are using those. Um, it's, you come up with something in a vacuum and get it very wrong. Um, we're looking forward to, uh, to hopefully getting some closer support from the GNOME Foundation. Um, so they have a, a second job opening for um, a system administrator DevOps, um, and we're hoping to share some of the work of the FlatHub project with the, the staff from the foundation. Um, I also feel like we could do some more clever sharing of the infrastructure. Um, you know, uh, Packets.net uh, is sponsoring like a free DAS of SDK, and it's sponsoring um, FlatHub. But we've got you know six of these giant like 96 core servers, and we can build stuff very very quickly. And you know, there's another six over there, and maybe we could have 10, and we can do everything just as fast. Yeah. Um, and the same with uh, GNOME's own CI workers. So GNOME's GitLab and all of this could be potentially one thing if we were a bit more joined up. Um, in terms of uh, improvements to the actual infrastructure itself, um, I'm, you, you know, BuildBot got us off the ground. Um, it's not necessarily, it's not a system that's designed for continuous delivery. So it do doesn't track, like, one input goes to one output. So if a build fails, we kind of have to manually scan back through the list and, like, re-trigger it. So there's no kind of guarantee that every commit results in a publish, which is, like, a little bit lame. Um, so. I'm interested to see if we can basically redo the kind of flat hub workflow, workflow through GitLab. Um, so people who use GitLab, maybe I should talk to you and, and understand that. 
Um, I'd quite like us to have like a staging infrastructure so we can actually do some more tests. You know, we've got changes we'd want to make to the build bot that we haven't made because we don't want to break it. And this is all very kind of web 1.0, um, and we can do better. So, um, and then yeah, just dealing with scale. So you know, at the moment we have you know one server here and two servers there and whatever. But um, as the number of apps and the repo size and the traffic goes up, we'll have to to, to keep on our toes there. Um, I would also like to have some kind of channel from Flathub for like beta builds or something like this. Um, we had this problem of talking to the, um, the, the free desktop SDK guys that they, they want to test all of the apps against their SDK, but there isn't a build service that will rebuild everything in Flathub with a new SDK version. And that's something that we should be able to solve as a, as a community. Um, so uh, and the, the other thing is scratch builds are not published, right? So I'd like to be able to publish the results of those builds so that if you're you know, submitting a new app or you're kind of testing something that you don't want to put into production, you can actually get the artifacts, artifacts back out from that build. Um, so. And about the website, uh, I would like to have it in different languages um, because it's not just English around. And um, at what's the typical stuff you will um, have, no, uh, ratings, uh, reviews, uh, the stats and different kinds of search, search applications by license, um, the ratings and stars, well, these uh, kind of things. Also, yesterday, some people were asking me about if I could list the run times and maybe the amount of applications that were using each run time. There are many ideas that uh, we can make to, to improve the website. Was me? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, so um, I hope we encourage you, and we'll tell you a little bit if you want to help us. What can you do? So just you're a user, enjoy it. I mean, we have more than 300 applications that you can very easily install. Try them, see if they work well. If they don't, fill a book, and, and we'll try to help. Um, tell your friends, tweet about it. Um, we, are being, we have been tweeting a little bit more about the application and stuff up recently, but for sure we can always do more to spread about the nice list of, of Slack Hub. Um, you are a developer. If you have an application, pull it in, in Slack Hub and see what happens. I mean, maybe you'll have feedback immediately since you publish the applications and you will be able to. Uh, fix the bugs easier and faster and, and enjoy this uh, new system. And if you are a company and you want to help us, pues contact with Rob and we will be with open arms. And yeah, this, this is the 200 and something people who contributed to Fathub on uh, GitHub so far. So um, never mind us. Thank you to all of our wonderful contributors. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening. Questions. Hi, Rob. Hello. Uh, what's the plan about curation? Is there is there any intention to kind of give some seal of approval on applications, or is it just a free for all? Um, hmm? I the question. We don't need to read this microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the. We're not aiming to do that in all cases. Um, the, the thing that we care about the most is that the application is what it says it is and comes from the real publisher of that application. Right. Um, so in a sense, we, we don't really want to get into the game of kind of auditing and checking the contents of the applications. Um, right. I think over time, we will need to do that. Um, that you know, as, a, as a kind of trapping of popularity, we'll have to deal with you know, potentially malicious uploads and, and looking at scanning and this kind of stuff. But yep. I think we would try to do that in as automated a way as possible and then do the kind of speedy removal of stuff that's reported as uh, you know, questionable or, or, or bad. Right. Um, we don't really want to make this a very human intensive process. Um, the, the initial review is more intensive because we, we have the kind of standards of, of metadata and, and you know, build kind of cleanliness and this kind of stuff that we try and get in place. Um, so there's a hurdle to get in. Um, but the idea is essentially that we're, um, we're not the publisher. We're, we're just a kind of channel from the publisher to the user. Um, so we don't want to kind of get too involved in, in all of that. 
Um, but so we, we do want to do a bit of linting and make sure that the kind of technical standards are maintained. And I think over time we'll have to work on this kind of um, <coughs> make sure that we remove and we're responsive to any problems. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, as I understand, at the moment, uh, FlatHub and Flatpak supports Linux at the moment. Uh, are there any plans to support other platforms like Mac or Windows, either natively or via virtualization in future? I think Alex tried Flatpak on the Windows thing, and it's not quite there. Or? It almost works. <laughs> it almost works. <laughs> so Flatpak on the Windows Linux emulation thingy might eventually work. It almost works now, but not quite. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not really a goal of ours. If it works, great. Um, the, the point of this is that we, we believe in free software desktop. We want you to be sitting at a Linux machine um, and using that as your desktop. This is the GNOME conference. So um, the, the whole point of this exercise is to bring the apps into there. Um, I, I appreciate the argument of kind of gateway drug that you know, if you get all these wonderful free software apps on your non-free platform, that maybe you will feel the pain less moving over. Um, but we're not going to go up our way to make it comfortable. We want you to be on Linux. Well, we want you to be on free software, which yeah, is Linux pragmatically at the moment. <laughs> right. That brings up an interesting question. How, how does this work for uh, commercial applications like Skype and those that are prominently listed, obviously? Well, we're in a gray area, right? The, um, we're trying to set up a conduit that lets applications get to users. Um, the most important thing to us is that those users are on a, a, an open source um, desktop system. Um, I think that we would do ourselves a disservice uh, as a, a project if we basically sort of denied or shut out the existence of these applications because then you're, you're actually actively dis discouraging people from using the ecosystem. Um, so we have a slightly different position on this than, you know, with my own board hat on, I should say, like, you know, down with that sort of thing. Um, and ultimately, that's what I want to see. Um, but also, if we're just saying to users, like, don't use our system, we don't have a compelling offering, then we may as well not bother, right? Um, so I, I want them there as, as long as Linux applications exist um, so that we have a complete offering. Um, but, you know, I don't like them, right? They don't, you know. <laughs> I'm assuming that they don't use the build service at all, right? No, so, so the, the, the extra data flat packs, um, they basically are downloaded on the client side so that the, the checksum of the dev file and the URL are included um, and anything else that you need to, to build or run the application is included inside the flat pack. Then when you install it, you basically get the extra stuff and kind of you know, unpack the dev um, and put the stuff in place. Um, but interestingly, we, we've got uh, our Spotify, for example, supports high DPI when upstream Spotify doesn't because we have a wrapper script that changes the zoom value. <laughs> Thank you, Cosimo. But, you know, we can add value. <laughs> Hi. Um, since you didn't mention it, and I know you worked really hard on it, would you like to tell everyone how awesome the source distribution stuff is as well, and how users can get access to the source of their applications and all of the stuff that was built there? Ah, uh -huh, yes. Um, so the, there is a feature in um, Flatpak which um, basically takes all of the source that went into a particular build and then commits it as a Flatpak extension. Um, so this is turned on in FlatHub, which means that for every application that we publish, then you can also get the source for it as well. Um, which makes for a really cool developer experience in Dome Builder. You can just say like that, build that, get me the source code. And because the build is reproducible with the manifest, you can redo it on your system and you can get all the source that went into that particular flat pack and just start developing it straight away. Um, so, yeah, that's very cool. plans for security updates? <laughs> yes, I think these guys will do them. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, um, that's part of the, the goal of having the uh, free data SDK 
as a sort of independent project is that we can consolidate you know different initiatives like um, you know, Gnome Continuous. Hopefully, we could eventually use that stuff, and the the Gnome and the GTK uh, Gnome and KDE runtimes can also use free desktop, so that we have one place to go to worry about whether the BNG is up to date or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's a work in progress. But kind of get, getting it into production is is one thing, and then you know, I'm I'm hoping that the uh, free desktop guys have a plan for continuing to do that. They're nodding. <laughs> Um, I, I think from a FlatHub perspective, one thing that we'd be interested in doing is deploying like a, a kind of known vulnerable versions checker. Um, so it's, it's quite easy to parse the manifests and look for the versions that would go into things. So we should be able to have a way of basically like, you know, do you have a copy of OpenSSL? You know, is it the old one? Like, you know, let's not publish that anymore or let's, uh, you know, notify the, the developer that they should update this. Um, so there's scope for kind of linting here that, that FlatHub can help with that. You mentioned that um, a couple of the, the goals that you don't have for FlatHub are curation or excluding closed source applications and things like that, right? Um, do you think um, a goal of FlatHub might be to help other people launch FlatHub interest, uh, in instances that are interested in doing that kind of uh, curation? Like maybe if, for example, uh, Debian wanted a, an instance where it was only free software. Yeah, actually, um the the Purism guys were talking to us about this last week because they PureOS is, is free software certified and uh, you know, that that comes with a very high bar of requirements in terms of not enabling or referring to proprietary software um, and I, I think we could almost publish like a second head like LibreHub or whatever that basically you know filtered the app stream and filtered the repo and used the same infrastructure to build the same apps and so as long as they were you know pure, then they could also appear in the, the, the kind of free thing. Um, in terms of other instances, um, we're not 100% there, but the idea is certainly that we describe all of the infrastructure as code, so we have Ansible and whatever Terraform stuff I need to learn how to use, but um, enough that you can basically kind of push button, receive FlatHub, um, and run your own instance. Um, so that's certainly a goal of mine, is to automate the infrastructure enough that you know, we can make a staging instance and other people can make their own instances as well. Um, so, yeah. That sounds great, thank you. Right. Thanks so much.